guys, Ralph here, and welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness here on Magnificent Monday here in Connecticut. The weather is brutal. I don't get you guys, I, I, for some reason I just give you a weather report. <laughs> I don't know why I do that, but it is brutal. It's like 75 degrees out, which isn't that bad, but the, the, weather, the humidity is so thick. I'm out on my bike today. <gasps> oh my God, unbelievable. Anyway, enough said. You saw the thumbnail. Peter Masur, the Dutch master. Guys, this guy, I don't know why I don't talk about him that much. Out of sight, out of mind, being over in the Netherlands and whatnot. And no longer with us, unfortunately. But what a player. Right there with Mel, Herseth, Kaimar. Right there. Chops-wise, extraordinary chops. Big Jerry guy for a while. Anyway. Haven't played a note, let me honk, and we will get to a little discussion about Peter Masur. shot in Netherlands his whole life, sort of a child prodigy. Went to um, the University of Antwerp, uh, then went into one of the military bands and sure enough graduated to the Concertgebouw. Am I saying that right? Concertgebouw Orchestra in the Netherlands, which is an extraordinary drum, uh, orchestra. Was at the time just extraordinary. I heard him live at Carnegie Hall. We'll get back to that in a minute. Okay. Um, Anyway, uh, he touched base with Jerry. He heard of Jerry, and they became quite good friends. Uh, they used to talk incessantly on the phone overseas. Um, a couple of trumpet jocks, trumpet geeks. Um, and for a time, Peter played his B flat, his C, and several of his mouthpieces for a time. And if you look at, listen to a lot of the stuff on the internet, you can tell when he's playing Jerry's stuff. Absolutely can tell. Uh, and some of the stuff is just not, it, you know, to each his own, you know, but the sound is clear and more centered and more pop with Jerry's stuff. The other stuff, more bockish, muffled. But, like Broyles, Herseth, um, Kaimar, he could make the box stuff work. On a C trumpet up to a high C, absolutely. Ironically enough, his son was a drop dead, solid double C guy. I mean, he was a computer geek uh, in the computer biz for a long time by trade, but killing double C guys. Anyway, um, so anyway, I heard him years ago when the Conchergadabao Concher came to New York and played a series of concerts at um, Carnegie Hall. And I got to go backstage with Jerry. He introduced me. I heard him warming up, guys. <laughs> oh, my own. G's on a, high, a C trumpet, which would be our A's. G's. I mean, Conrad Gazzo would put the horn in the case and run the other way. I mean, just centered and locked in. I know he could go up to the double C. But it was before concert, and <laughs> the uh, about 40 minutes before the concert. And the concert was... Tchaikovsky fourth. Which was in um, 
Lieutenant Kiji, which brought him, they brought him out front for it. He was a big star. He's doing recordings and solo stuff all over the place in the Netherlands. He was just the man in the Netherlands and in the orchestra too. But anyway, heard him warm up, extraordinary, just extraordinary. Um, heard Tchaikovsky for it, and those trumpet calls, man, they're not difficult in the traditional sense. But madam, the tone, <laughs> the tone in, in, in Carnegie Hall, ah, to the back of the wall, oh, please, just putting holes in the heads of the people in the balcony. I mean, just very, very Herseth-like. That was, was on Jerry's stuff. I don't know what mouthpiece he used. It was not one of the small ones. He used one of the bigger ones, more of the orchestral ones. I think it might have been the number eight, which is equivalent to the one size. And I think um, Jerry might have doctored it up a little bit with uh, bigger holes and backboards and all stuff like that. I'm not sure. Okay? Um, anyway, I'll get to that in a second. Then, again, he came out front and did Lieutenant Kiji. Now, once again, <laughs> you talk about knocking the walls down and then be able to crest the baby. We've all heard... Well, not all of us for Lieutenant Kiji. I mean, just gorgeous, warm, lyrical, but centered, man. Just killing it. And that was on Jerry's equipment, for sure. I know he played Bach prior to this. And I think after Jerry's stint, I guess Yamaha made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Uh, Jerry didn't like the other ones as good as his. Quite frankly, I don't either. And of the recordings that I've heard of him, I can pick it up. That's Jerry's stuff. Oh, that's Yamaha. That's Bach. But anyway, uh, chops. Oh, jeez. Take a look at these chops. I don't have the greatest pictures of them, but I'm telling you, I saw him this far away. They're perfect. Just like we do. Locked in. Completely relaxed. There was no corners whatsoever, no tension whatsoever. Relaxed. And the top lip was just so fat. It looked like he was trying to blow a bubble or something. Trying to blow a bubble. And now here's the thing. Talk about perfectionist. He nicked one tiny little, I mean, I'm telling you, all it was was a nick on the Lieutenant Kiji. And he would not go out with us after. Jerry wanted to take him somewhere and, and you know, have buy him dinner and all this sort of stuff and talk. He wouldn't come out with us. He was embarrassed that, of that Nick. Now, all the reviews the next day in the papers just <laughs> couldn't rave enough. I mean, this was, uh, was this during Phil Smith? I think it was during Phil Smith. So couldn't rave enough about the brilliance and the tone and all this sort of stuff. I mean, just a wonderful, wonderful player right there with all the greats. Now, he loved modern music. And I don't remember what clip I got you. Was it the... I think it was his, his one of his modern... But listen to the pop. It, yeah, it's, it's that one. That one that I'm giving you. And it's mezzo forte pianist, but listen to the pop to each one. Listen to the pop to each one. And I don't think that recording was on Jerry's equipment. But just listen to the pop. And you can see. Guys, the tongue is it. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. Dutch master, Peter Masurs, one of the great ones. I wish I've talked more about him. But again, when you're talking, Broyles, Herseth, Kaimar, which as you know, are my guys. You gotta put him in the ballpark, you have to. Anyway, eat and drink fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power. Love you all. Okay.